Preparation of PCR master mix is a crucial part of molecular diagnostics and it should be done in a devoted room with dedicated equipment. Leave lab coats outside and put on clean ones to work inside the mix room. Use clean disposable sleeves and gloves to avoid any risk of contamination. Remember that no samples of DNA or RNA should ever enter this room. A devoted refrigerator should be present inside the mix room for the storage of molecular reagents. All stock solutions of reagents are stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius to maintain shelf life. All reagents should be allowed to thaw on ice, except the enzymes, reverse transcriptase and TAC polymerase, which should be kept at minus 20 degrees Celsius until used to avoid degradation. Aliquots of the reagent stock solutions, particularly the primers and probes, should also be prepared. Vortex and spin each reagent before use to avoid pellets of material forming in the tube. Before the reaction mixture is prepared, it is necessary to calculate the final amounts of each reagent required for the number of samples under examination. The addition of a positive PCR control and a negative PCR control have to be considered in this calculation. In this session, a one-step RT-PCR protocol is presented. In a one-step reaction, reverse transcription of RNA and amplification of DNA take place in the same tube. Note that reagents should be kept on ice for the duration of the master mix preparation. Prepare and label sufficient PCR tubes for the number of samples to be tested. To ensure homogeneous distribution of PCR reagents, it is advisable to prepare the mix in a single reaction tube and then aliquot the necessary amount into each single PCR tube. Add PCR reagents as they are listed in the protocol. Distilled sterile RNAs free water is used to dilute the reagents to the correct concentrations. TAC polymerase buffer is needed to create the optimal chemical conditions for the activity of the TAC polymerase. Magnesium chloride, MgCl2, is crucial for the activity of TAC polymerase as it acts as a catalyzer of the enzyme reaction. Note that in some kits it is included in the polymerase buffer. The oxynucleotides are incorporated into the newly synthesized strand by TAC polymerase. The forward and reverse primers are short sequences of nucleotides, complementary to both strands of the double helix of the DNA, that provide the initiation site for the elongation of the new DNA molecule by TAC polymerase. An RNase inhibitor is required to preserve the RNA template from RNase digestion. For the preparation of a master mix for real-time PCR, a fluorescent probe is also added to the mix solution. This is the short nucleotide sequence complementary to a target sequence located between the primers that is linked to a fluorescent reporter dye. Note that probes need to be kept in the dark and away from light sources to avoid reduction in fluorescence. Finally, add the enzymes to the mix. These should be kept at minus 20 degrees until use. The TAC polymerase is a thermostable enzyme derived from the bacterium Thermus aquaticus. It is able to recognize the primer template duplex and make a complementary copy of the template by adding nucleotides to the primer. 
In the case of a one-step RT-PCR protocol, the reverse transcriptase is required to produce cDNA from RNA. When all the reagents are included in the mix, vortex the tube to mix them and spin it briefly. Distribute the single reaction mixture into each sterile PCR tube. Keep the tubes on ice. If the mix contains fluorescent probes, remember to keep the tube in the dark and away from light sources to avoid probe degradation. After each working session, it is recommended that the working surface and the pipettes should be cleaned with the 0.5% solution of sodium hypochlorite. This should then be washed away with a 70% alcohol solution to avoid corrosion of the equipment. After the last working session of the day, close the cabinet and leave the UV light switched on overnight. It is recommended to take the cleaned pipettes out of the cabinet to avoid the damaging effects of the UV light on the plastic and the consequent loss of accuracy of the instrument. Addition of template nucleic acid to the master mix should be done in a room devoted to this task with dedicated equipment. Keep the RNA samples and the PCR tubes containing the master mix on ice to avoid degradation of the RNA or enzymes. Note that if the master mix contains fluorescent probes, it should be kept away from light sources. Since this procedure has a high risk of contamination, it is important to add the RNA sample by opening one tube at a time and using a separate tip for each sample. Add a positive and a negative control to each batch of samples. The final PCR product of a positive sample is called an amplicon and consists of millions of copies of the target DNA. It is strongly recommended that the hood should be cleaned after each working session. Before loading the samples into the thermocycler, spin the tubes for a few seconds. Now put the tube in the thermocycler. Program the correct parameters according to the protocol and start the reaction. Polymerase chain reaction is an extremely sensitive means of amplifying a specific DNA sequence. It is essential for a successful PCR that the diagnostic sample contains at least a few copies of an intact strand of nucleic acid, RNA or DNA, encompassing the region to be amplified, and that impurities are sufficiently diluted so as not to inhibit the polymerization step of the PCR reaction. When the run is finished, the PCR product can be easily visualized on a gel electrophoresis system using a UV light source. Note that the amplicon is stable for a few days at 4 degrees Celsius.